So design systems are a really hot topic now. Everyone's talking about them. And whether or not you're in an agency or you work in-house, using a design system will help you create consistent designs with reusable components and just make your life a lot easier. But a design system is more than a component library or a set of colors. It takes time to get set up and you need to make sure the right people have the right responsibilities to make sure that it continues to evolve and grow with the products and services you're using it for. So before you start off on the journey of creating a design system and working out all the maintenance and roles and responsibilities that go along with it, it's worth planning it out. And that's what the design system canvas is perfect for. So in this video, I'm going to show you what it is, how to use it, what the benefits of it are, and I've included a link to the canvas on FigJam and as a PDF so you can get it and start using it right away. Let's go. Hey, I'm Parvin. I'm a design educator who teaches people how to get better at interface design. If you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. So, as I've already said, design systems are super useful because they promote consistency in interface design. You don't have to spend time coming up with the same component again and again. You don't have to think about the patterns you've used in one place and making sure that you're recreating that in the same way because you can check your design system in this documentation to see how that's done. And they also improve collaboration. If you're onboarding new designers or you're working with a team of quite a lot of designers, having a design system in place as a single source of truth for how your company does design is really, really good. And the end user will see this as well. It's not just internal benefits. Products and services which are designed with a design system will have a better user experience. So what is the design system canvas? Well, it's a one page tool to get everything you need about your design system canvas onto that single page. It's a tool which I created a few months ago because we really needed it with a client I was working on. I can't talk too much more about it, but we found it really useful to get the client on board, get our agency on board, and just get everyone on the same page. Now, I'm not claiming to be an expert at design systems, but I think this tool will really help you map out what you need when you're embarking on the journey of creating or maintaining or updating a design system. So no matter where you are, I think this tool will be really useful. The canvas itself is inspired by the Lean Startup Canvas by Ash Moria. The way it works is you just work along through each section in order, and the whole thing should take you only around half an hour to complete. So it's a really, really quick exercise that you can do with your team. And before I show you what it is, I think it's worth saying that there are three main benefits to using it. Firstly, it will show you where you currently are. It will help you map out what stuff you've got which already exists and what state it's in. The second benefit is it helps you plan where you're going to get to. You can work out what time frame is realistic for your design system. And thirdly, I think it's just a really useful tool to get buy-in. Senior stakeholders at your company, or if you're at an agency at your client company, will really appreciate seeing visually where you are and where you want to get to with your design system. Especially if you don't have anything in place yet, it's a really useful tool to convince people that a design system is the right thing to spend time building. So this is the design system canvas. This is a version I'd filled in already. and I'm just gonna take you through each section. So it starts with the problem. And this section is all about the problems you're currently facing. So for the client company I was working with, they had different teams, different services they were looking to launch and they weren't sure how that brand would work with their existing brand. They also struggled because they had a marketing site which was very differently branded to the products they'd sold. It was a bit more out of date. So customers had the problem of seeing different versions of their brand. They also had more of a process problem, which was about internal teams who didn't have access to the right files. So next, we look at existing assets. And this company had loads of stuff in lots of different places. They had an image library. They had zero height guidelines, which were out of date. They had some Figma files with new stuff for the new products. And they had a boilerplate component library, which they were also using here and there. And then also the web and marketing team had their own Figma file with outdated color and type decisions. And then they also had some PowerPoint and Word templates which were floating around. So based on all of this, I would say that they were between zero and one on this maturity level scale. So we knew every product and service wasn't being designed completely bespoke. They were relying on stuff which existed, but foundation files like colors and type, not even those were in the right place. You know, if you said, go look at this company's color system, go look at what fonts they're using and download them. There wasn't one single place to do that. Stuff was spread around a bit. So I would say between zero and one is where they ended up. So then based on all of that, we brainstormed lots of new resources that we could put in place. So this is just a few of them. Figma component library, React component library, maybe a brand book, maybe a pattern library, a bank of icons and images to use. And those are just the physical, not physical assets, but the stuff, the like tangible things that come with a design system. The other part of a design system is processes. So some things which we were really keen to work on was making sure we knew what the process was for creating new components. If a designer working on a new product said, hey, I don't have an input form for dates and times, and we've never needed that up until now, and it would be useful for that to be a design system component, what should that process be? 
And that's such an important part of a design system. It's like an intangible thing, but something which we needed to capture. The next section is affected products. To keep this client anonymous, this is a, I've not filled this one out in this example, but you list out what products and services will tangibly benefit from the design system. And then similarly, you think about who the consumers are. So who will benefit from using this? Who does it affect? Doing this, you realize that a design system will benefit so many more people than just the immediate product teams who might use it. Next is who's actually responsible for maintaining it? Does this fall under design? Does it fall under dev? Does it fall under both? Do the PMs need to be impacted? Do other stakeholders need to have a say? And then as well as maintainers, there should be a broader superset of that group who will champion it. So here, I've just written everyone hopefully, but I think it's really important to write down names of the people in your organization who will be championing the creation and the maintenance and the usage of a design system. Without this, it won't go anywhere. So then we're on to section eight about scope, and this is taking into account all of the inputs above. So thinking about what is feasibly possible to do, you should write out in this section what is realistic. So here I've said consolidating the boilerplate library with the Figma product library. So they had these two Figma files they were pulling from, but we decided it'd be worth trying to make that into one thing, so one single component library. And then similarly with code, the code base was one product and we thought it'd be worth splitting that out into its own code repo and having a process for how to contribute when you're working on products that have design system components. It's also worth including negative scope. So here we said it's not worth looping in the marketing and web teams. That team was a separate part of the organization and working on an external facing website. So we thought it was out of scope for this phase of the design system. Maybe when we move further up the maturity level, it'd be worth looping them in. Section nine is the adoption strategy. So what needs to happen for the design system to actually be adopted? So this can be practical stuff. The client company wasn't on the right Figma plan to use all the features we needed for Figma components. And we talked about documentation but also stuff like socializing it. So sharing it, uh, business updates, getting more senior people to talk about it. This again comes to the championing part of it. If you're not talking about it and just creating a design system in a silo, no one's really gonna know about it or use it. And then the very last section is costs. So here I had written out a few different options for how we could use designers' times wisely to present to the client and discuss with them. But here, as well as thinking about team capacity, it's worth thinking about other projects required that need to happen in the same time frame. So get that all down in here. So you can see it's super simple to work through. It's just 10 sections and it really shouldn't take a team more than half an hour to drop loads of sticky notes on and come up with a plan. So now you've seen how it works, I really, really encourage you to just go away, try it out and start chucking post-its on the canvas or print it out in a big A2, A3 size, blow it up, put it on a wall and add sticky notes. And I hope you find it useful. If you do end up using the design system canvas, I would love to hear how it went for you. Please, please do drop a comment below this video or on designsystemcanvas.com. I'd love to hear how you've got on with using it. Thank you so much for watching. Just before I go, I just want to say if you like this video, please do hit the like button below and do hit subscribe. I'm new to YouTube and I'm trying to grow this channel, so let me know what things you want to see and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers!